Welcome to the second part of this tutorial and in this part we will see how to run Daphne and how to uh, segment a data set and perform all the practical uh, features that the user interface offers. So this is uh, what uh, Daphne looks like. It has two windows. Here in this uh, figure window the uh, data set will be displayed and we're in the toolbox which is a separate window are all the tools that we can use to perform the segmentation and to check and refine the protocols. We also have the menus uh, from which we can access all the important features like import and export and the calculation tools. So we'll start by loading data and we will start with the thigh data set. As I mentioned we have the models for the segmentation of the thigh and of the leg uh, these data sets are available on the Daphne website as well in the demo page. This is uh, uh, the loaded data set. We can uh, uh, increase its size and uh, we also have the possibility of uh, changing the windowing by using the uh, right mouse button. Uh, so left, right changes the contrast and top uh, bottom changes the uh, brightness adjust it to a comfortable windowing level. We also have the possibility of zooming in and out. So this is uh, the zoom tool. So for example we can take one single leg or we can use the pan tool to uh, change to a different place. So we shouldn't forget uh, of uh, removing the uh, tool that we are using so that we can actually edit the image. So let's take one uh, middle slice where we can see uh, some nice features and uh, uh, let's start by showing the features for the manual segmentation that Daphne offers. So manual segmentation is one mode in which you can use Daphne, it will work completely standalone and you will not need any API key to run it in standalone mode and use manual segmentation. First thing to mention we have two edit modes the mask mode which is the default mode and the contour mode. In the contour mode uh, which is useful for initial segmentation of uh, ROIs we uh, can define some handles uh, around the feature and define uh, an interpolating spline in the contour. So for example uh, uh, let's uh, take uh, a new ROI uh, on the rectus femoris and we call it our F test. So now we are in contour mode. <coughs> Here in this uh, edit uh, box uh, we have three options and we can uh, uh, add move uh, knots and this is what we will do initially. So we can just click around the features that we are interested into and uh, uh, we, uh, we define the contour this way. So as you see, uh, we have. Uh, our, if we click on a knot, we can move that knot. If we uh, click near the path, then we will add a knot at that path point. And if we want to remove knots, we can go to the remove button and just click on the knots that we want to remove. Clear just uh, uh, removes all the uh, knots from the current slice and goes back to the initial stage. So, first uh, uh, thing to mention is it's very very useful uh, for uh, the usage of Daphne to uh, use, uh, uh, to use uh, uh, keyboard shortcuts. So red in contour mode, you see now we are in add move mode, if we press control or uh, uh, if we press the command button in, uh, um, in, uh, in Mac then we can uh, uh, move to temporarily uh, move to remove mode and we can delete one knot so we can go and delete the knot. Uh, uh, of course I forgot to mention this was quite intuitive uh, uh, to uh, go from one image to the other you can use the scroll bar or you can use the arrows on your keyboard. So coming back uh, again if you are in remove mode and you temporarily want to switch to add mode then you use the shift button and this is uh, how it will work. Of 
course uh, we also have a redo possibility undo a redo possibility so that if we make a mistake you can go back one or more steps uh, the contour option has also a couple of other uh, possibilities which is uh, uh, some uh, functionality to do a snapping to edges of the feature for example here it will try to detect the nearest uh, uh, edge and it will snap the handles on on that there is also a simplify feature uh, feature in case we have uh, uh, redundant knots we can uh, we can simplify those for example let's add a few knots like this if we click simplify then we have removed some knots um, sometimes the uh, interface gets a bit stuck so you can just go one uh, slice above and one slice below and uh, it will go back to, to its initial stage. You can also uh, translate and, uh, and or rotate a whole ROI and this you can only do in uh, contour mode. Um, from the contour mode, uh, another thing that uh, uh, we should mention, the uh, one uh, muscle or one feature could be uh, could contain uh, different uh, uh, separate contours. So for example, uh, let's imagine we want to uh, segment instead of the rectus femoris, we want to segment uh, all the quadriceps. And we could do something like this. Now it will not be very accurate. I just want to demonstrate one thing. So let's imagine this is the quadriceps. Probably actually this is, doesn't belong to the quadriceps. We want to exclude the bone from uh, this ROI. So we can create another so-called sub ROI that is around the bone. When we go and export this mask, the actual mask that will be generated is the uh, exclusion or so the XOR uh, between these two contours. And this can be seen by switching from contour to mask mode. So this uh, uh, is a way of switching between the two edit modes and in principle you can switch from one to the other uh, seamlessly. Since we are in mask mode, let's uh, now uh, also demonstrate how this works. Now the uh, edit uh, and move, add and move is replaced by paint and the uh, uh, delete is replaced by the erase uh, function. And you see the, the brush has become, so the mouse cursor has become uh, a brush. And it's a red color when we are painting and it will get blue when we are erasing features. We can change the size of the brush in, uh, with this uh, uh, slider here and we can change its shape as well uh, in the round this indicates the radius in the square this indicates the uh, size so it will be uh, bigger in, in uh, addition to using the slider we can also use uh, keyboard shortcuts and these are useful if you want to do uh, for example uh, uh, initial uh, gross uh, modification of the ROI and then go and do much more fine-tuned modifications in this case. Um, also some things that you can do in mask mode, you can grow the mask and shrink the mask uh, so that uh, you can do some uh, global uh, uh, adaptations. Let's uh, now go back to uh, just uh, having the rectus femoris in this ROI and I will demonstrate the last feature of this uh, interface which is the uh, propagation of uh, uh, of the mask or of the contour to neighboring slices so we can use the N and B buttons or the propagate forward and propagate back see this uh, feature uses uh, uh, non-rigid registration to try to 
uh, find the um, corresponding features in the neighboring slices and propagate the mask accordingly. Um, this relies on uh, no rigid registration, so uh, in this case of this data set I pre-calculated uh, the transformation between all the slices, that's why it's relatively fast. If you haven't done so, it will take a few seconds to propagate each slice. So I suggest that you use the Calculate Transform button, which uh, will uh, calculate all the transforms for these datasets and store them permanently on disk. Or you can also use the Transform Calculator, which is a standalone application that is also installed separately under Windows and under Mac. Uh, the, and you can use uh, uh, these two uh, offline calculated transform for a whole DICOM folder. The ideal format, uh, file format for this program is DICOM. It also uh, supports enhanced DICOM as produced by Philips uh, and uh, it, also uses, it also supports of course NumPy arrays uh, uh, as uh, without of course any uh, resolution information. Um, Nifty is uh, uh, partially supported. It will not, when you uh, do load data, here Nifty is not appearing, but uh, uh, it is supported in the background and we are working on it and it will be supported very soon. Um, okay, in <clears throat> now we are ready to move to the actual auto segmentation part. And to do this, I will uh, initially uh, show you the uh, preference uh, uh, dialog. So in the preference dialog, uh, in this case, uh, the most important preference that you will want to set is your personal server access key. In this case, we've used test, but uh, you will this will not work uh, uh, after this demonstration, and you will need to request your own, as you've seen in the previous video. There are also some other options, and important options is the separation of left and right. This is relevant for our models because they work on the left and right legs. And you can decide, in this case, the default behavior is to have separate ROIs for the left and right anatomy. But if you uncheck it, then uh, you will uh, uh, obtain only um, ROIs that are defined on both legs at the same time. So, for example, you will, receive, you will have the vastus lateralis uh, ROI and it's defined on both legs. This depends a little bit what you want to achieve. Uh, you can also change some uh, uh, behavior of the appearance, so you can change the image interpolation, for example, you can uh, replace it to nearest neighbor interpolation, and you see when I click yes, now the image has become pixelated. Um, it's not as nice to see, but sometimes it's useful if you want to be pixel exact in the segmentation in the manual refinement. So the uh, default is the spline 36 interpolation. Similarly, you can also change the color map uh, if you want to visualize your anatomy in a different color. But at the moment, we will keep the default. You will also have some possibility of changing these uh, colors. So this is the color of the active and inactive ROIs and uh, the, the colors of the brushes. There is some advanced configuration, but uh, uh, this is uh, mostly for internal use and uh, you will no, never really need to use that uh, in, uh, in, in during normal usage. Okay, this set, um, the uh, personal server access key is now set. Uh, sometimes, so now we can now proceed to uh, run an auto-segmentation of this uh, data set. We have to check, you see now that I uh, use the preference, this is a small bug, uh, the classification that is uh, of the anatomy that is shown here has reverted to leg. We had uh, uh, selected tie in the beginning, so let's put it back to tie and to make sure just click all so that the classification of the whole data set is tie. Uh, now we can click auto segment and this uh, will replace the existing segmentation. Uh, so if you have done some some previous uh, auto segmentation and you have done some modification, just clicking here will replace it. We'll just do it on one slice. You can uh, select a slice range here, but let's just do it on one. So now there is a new model that is being downloaded. You see this is receiving it from the server. 
and then uh, it will uh, load it in memory and uh, uh, run the segmentation. It will take initially the loading takes a few seconds, and then every segmentation will uh, uh, will take uh, uh, just a couple of seconds if you have a GPU, maybe three or four if you don't. So now we still we have all the uh, ROI is defined, this RF test is still here, we can delete it because we don't need it anymore. And you see that uh, uh, the segmentation is already quite good, we can go and see it uh, bilaterally, but there are some uh, uh, parts that are still to be uh, optimized. For example, there are some areas uh, here in the, um, in the fat that shouldn't belong here, and uh, uh, we can refine it. So now in normal erase mode, uh, in the mask mode erase, we can only uh, modify one single ROI at a time, so we would go and modify only this red ROI, but uh, uh, if we want to just clean up the whole image, we can just click on erase from all ROIs, and this will uh, just clear the image from every ROI, regardless of what is actually what is actually uh, selected. So for example, we'll do this. Now, something else that we see, the vastus lateralis actually goes all the way here. So let's move to paint. Uh, so some portions are misclassified as other muscles. So we want to actually, that the vastus lateralis includes also these areas that were misclassified. Now I've painted over and uh, uh, the software by itself doesn't uh, mind if there is overlap um, between ROIs, but we can click uh, on ROI remove overlap or press the R button to actually uh, to make the overlapping ROIs go away. So the, only the, over, the ROIs that overlap with the currently selected ROI uh, go away. Um, You can also uh, do some uh, uh, Boolean uh, uh, operations on the ROIs. So you can combine, for example, the vastus lateralis with the rectus femoris. Uh, in this case, it's the right. We do a union and, uh, and let's put a different name, VL plus RF. And this will be the combined ROI that, uh, that is defined with the union. You can also do, uh, this we don't need now, we can also do uh, different, uh, uh, different uh, operations, but uh, we can, you can explore them on your own or, uh, um, or just uh, uh, read the documentation where everything is explained. Okay, so this is uh, uh, it regarding the um, uh, the automatic segmentation. Of course, we can do an automatic segmentation on more slices. Let's do a couple of more slices. And uh, see, in this case, the rectus femoris has been uh, quite uh, grossly overestimated, so we will need to do some uh, uh, some modifications. Let's put it, for example, like this. And uh, let's clean it up a little bit. And initially, you will need to do this operation for uh, every muscle uh, until and every slice. So when you have at least five slices that are satisfactorily um, segmented, you can uh, either run an improved model uh, step, which will run uh, uh, an incremental learning uh, step and will improve the segmentation for the future slices. Or uh, if you don't want to do this intermediately, you can export uh, 
the mask you can save the masks and uh, if you've loaded them as Diacom you can save them as Diacom which is what I suggest and uh, uh, you can you will have uh, uh, the mask exported as uh, uh, Diacom files with the same headers as the original images masks uh, I will not do it now because it will take a few minutes and we would have to uh, wait for it um, another important feature uh, if you save if you save the masks as Diacom then you can import these masks on a different data set what I mean is uh, if you have for example a quantitative data set uh, and uh, uh, you want to uh, apply on these quantitative data sets the masks that were segmented on a for example different 3d data set this you can do and the software will automatically align this, uh, the masks based on the Diacom headers um, importing an uh, ROI file, importing and exporting of ROI files uh, uh, is done and you can save the ROIs uh, in uh, uh, an internal format it's uh, um, practically a, a Python pickle format you save it as my ROIs and then you can load them again <clears throat> but this of course uh, will only work on the same data set so it's used to uh, store your uh, your intermediate work but if you want to then apply the masks on a different contrast then you will need to uh, save the masks as Tycho. Finally the last uh, uh, feature that I wanted to mention is the possibility of uploading the data. This will uh, uh, package your data and your segmentation and upload them to our servers. I mentioned in the beginning that this is absolutely not a necessary step this is uh, something that you can do, it's for your convenience, if you want to show us some usage case and you have the right to do so. So the data that is sent in, it will be anonymous, uh, but uh, uh, you have to make sure that you have the right of sending the data across the internet and uh, uh, letting other people use your data. So uh, if you do so, we are grateful because we can use your data to improve uh, our software in the future but uh, uh, it's not a requirement and uh, your uh, uh, your software will work perfectly even without other uh, possibilities that you have you can uh, calculate uh, uh, some statistics uh, and this will save uh, a com a separated value file that uh, includes uh, the uh, volume uh, for each vo for each ROI, the average uh, uh, gray level value for each ROI, and some other statistics. Uh, or you can also use uh, uh, pyramidomics feature calculations, and here you can uh, specify a couple of uh, settings, uh, and uh, you can uh, extract uh, texture analysis uh, uh, indices for every ROI that is uh, uh, that is defined. Um, you can, as mentioned, you can remove overlap in the ROI uh, menu. You have the possibility of uh, doing Boolean operations on ROI or copying and renaming uh, ROIs. The help has uh, access to the online documentation. It's just a link to the uh, to, to the Daphne site. Uh, has a, a reminder of the shortcuts, which is the same as is uh, displayed here. And finally, just as an about. Uh, that uh, contains our emails uh, and uh, uh, some information of our funding and our institutions. Okay, so this concludes uh, uh, the live demonstration part of this uh, tutorial. Uh, we will uh, uh, move to a third video where we will uh, uh, talk about how to extend Daphne and talk about the uh, programming interface of Daphne.